I'm Christina Whiteley here, Realtor with Fabulous Homes Colorado, powered by Keller Williams Freedom. And this is Fabulous Neighbors of Colorado, where we feature local businesses and entrepreneurs. And today I'm so lucky I'm sitting with Chelsea Scoggin. She is the designer and co-owner of CS Apex Landscape Design. Hi, Chelsea. Hi. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so what is, first of all, CS Apex Landscape Design? It's a yes. mouthful. So, <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, so we're a design company. So mm -hmm. I like to say we do the fun part of landscaping. We mm -hmm. get to sit down with the homeowners, decide what your wants are, what your needs are, what the budget is, and then we help facilitate if you want to do the work yourself. Great, you have a design, you have a plan, you have a way to go. Yeah. Or if you want to hire somebody, we can help with that process too. I think that's really cool because then you give the DIYers the option and someone like me that has a black thumb, <laughs> let the professionals handle it. So yes, exactly. That's very nice. So we all know there's a lot of HOAs and metro districts out here, which yep. are really the same thing, <laughs> let's be honest. But yeah. what happens if I live in an HOA or a metro district? Yeah, no problem. We work with a lot of HOAs and a lot of covenant communities within the city. Okay. Uh, I've been in the industry for about eight years here in Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs area. Mm -hmm. So I've worked with many and almost all of them. There okay. are a few I haven't touched yet, unfortunately. I'm working on changing There's that. so many though. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. You'll get are. to them. <laughs> so we do offer the advantage of our plans are they are CAD, they have the material list, they have the planting list, okay. they have everything you would need to submit to your HOA. And it takes a lot of the headache. Out, it I'm does. sure because it I've heard. <laughs> yes. So we've because we've worked with so many HOAs, we can tailor the design to exactly what your HOA needs to get you approved. Oh, perfect. So you had mentioned when we had coffee the other day, there's a difference between zeroscaping and zenscaping. So let's break yes. it down for the people. So you said there's seven zeroscaping principles. Yep. And I'm oh, going to chill a little bit. I printed it off, so I won't forget <laughs> one. So planning and design, which is where I come in, planning out what you want, what you need, mm -hmm. the design part, making sure it fits with our climate and your budget. Okay. Uh, soil improvement, let's face it, we have really cruddy soil here. We really do. <laughs> we so, do. depending on whether, and it changes throughout the city. Some parts of the city have more sand, some have more clay. Part yes. of that soil improvement, soil amending, is making sure the plants are gonna survive the best in your soil. Uh, Next, and this is one that often gets forget, forgotten, is practical turf area. Now that's not saying that you can't have turf in xeriscaping, it just means strategically placing it where you can use it. Mm -hmm. So for example, when I lived in the northeast side of the springs with my own family, we didn't need a thousand square feet of grass. We need, needed about 300 to be comfortable because sure. there's so many parks, so many places that we could go to play. Right. Now where we're at currently, we're on 40 acres, we have more land, we have a little bit larger turf area, just because mm -hmm. we have the space, and we use a very natural Colorado-grown turf versus the typical Kentucky bluegrass. Okay. Um, next is efficient irrigation. If you don't have a drip system, get a drip system. If you don't have an in-ground system, get one. And there's so many ways of doing it professionally. There are these great kits now at Home Depot you can use. Oh. Lots of practical solutions for irrigation. Mulch. We need it. We have cruddy soil again. <laughs> What's mulch? That's the really dark stuff. So there's actually on. two kinds of mulch. Okay. There's the typical wood chips and shredded oh, mulch wood uh -huh. that we see a lot around planting. So bark. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So am I using the right word? Yes. Okay. I yes. kill everything except my kids and pets. <laughs> oh well, you know you got the two important ones. <laughs> uh, and then there is also some people qualify rock mulch. Oh, so okay. it just helps contain the moisture, keeps the moisture where it's supposed to go versus evaporating out into our atmosphere. So really mulch just keeps the water where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Whether it's wood, whether it's rock, it just depends on what's going on in your landscape, which one's the better solution. Okay. Hmm. Then low, use wa low water use plants. So of course, all of our lovely plants that make our landscapes look that just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then appropriate maintenance, and I always forget that one. So, I hear a lot, well, I only have an hour a week, what can I do? Great, thank you for letting me know. Now we know what plants we should choose. Yeah. Some people, they want to fiddle, they want to be out there, they want to be touching their plants yeah. an hour a day. 
they're a whole different plant category because they can do the maintenance they want to do the maintenance. Sure. So part of the xeriscape and proper planning is determining how much time are you going to have and how much water do you want to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all falls into the xeriscaping. Interesting. Now, sunscaping, and I know yeah, we talked about this and there's still a controversy I found out on the internet this morning between <laughs> Xeroscaping with a Z or Zenscaping. Zenscaping takes more of the Japanese principles and it's rock with a few decorative trees or decorative plant, but it's really mostly rock. There's okay. not many plants, there's not really much of anything. Mm -hmm. Xeroscaping is truly just rock. No plants, no turf, rock. Okay. I would argue that there are better ways, <clears throat> better ways to appeal to your homeowner association and your home to make it look better without doing those two. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah. There's so much you can do with rocks these days now. It used there to are. be just red lava rock. And now it's like you see all these <laughs> designs with different kinds of rocks. It's really cool. We've come oh, yeah. a really long way in my opinion. Oh yeah, definitely, so. definitely. And really to incorporate two different, even if it's two different sizes of rocks or two yeah. complementing colors of rocks with a few boulders and a few grasses, it, it makes a world of difference. And we found it actually increased your home value by about 10% if it's done properly. Oh, okay. Yes. I mean, curb appeal will help for sure. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what areas do you cover? So we actually cover a fairly wide area. So we go all the way to the far eastern side of Peyton, not okay. just Falcon, we go beyond Falcon. Uh -huh. We go up to Woodland Park, wow. we go up to Monument, mm -hmm. so King's, 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 King's Deer, mm -hmm. there we go, I always, I always say it wrong. Um, and we do do all the way down to Pueblo. That is a big area, that's a really broad area. And different climates in each one, oh, yes. too, and different, um, like you were saying, because I noticed when I show homes on the north end, the dirt is so much different, and as I get closer to Pueblo, it turns sandier. I'm starting mm -hmm. to see more cacti, so you've, you've got, got to know what you're doing. Uh, all yes. those, and the Woodland Park is <laughs> freezing. <laughs> yep, yeah. So I actually started, my first internship out of college was at Denver Botanic Gardens. So oh, cool. specifically with the high alpine Colorado specific plants. Mm -hmm. So Woodland Park feels at home for me. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. So what is the grow time in Colorado Springs? Because it never fails. Somebody's like, oh no, it's snowing and it's Memorial Weekend. <laughs> it happens. Yes, it does. So generally we like to say that the first safe time to plant is Mother's Day. Okay. Anything before Mother's Day, you have to wrap it. You really have to be careful and take care of it. Mm -hmm. Now we do have those really strange years like yeah, this last this year. year. Um, but that being said, just as long as you're on top of it, a lot of plants were able to recover this year because we had some proper planning, because we got on Facebook, we got on those initiatives right away, and like, here, here, how to repair the damage done by this weird storm. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, so generally we say Mother's Day is a safe point, tentatively, mm -hmm. um, and then October 15th is really the last oh. time you can plant in Colorado. So we do have a shorter season than some parts of the country, yeah. but it's fairly long. I didn't realize it was that long. Yep. Now turf is the one oddity. Okay. Do not plant turf after October 1st. Okay. You have a very low chance of it surviving. We have seen some that can survive past October 1st, but it's a very rare instance. Interesting. We plan it ours like towards the end of September. I thought my husband was crazy, but Apparently no. he's not. He's <laughs> not, no. That's actually a really good time because we're now past the heat of the summer. Mm -hmm. We're into those cooler nights, so the water is more efficient when you put it down. And you're getting that root system established before that, that first frost. Yeah. And that brings me to my next question. When do we start watering our plants? And it's so hard because we need to blow out our sprinklers before that first freeze. And then 70 degrees again. And so, gosh, yeah. it's yeah. hard out here. So generally we say, and specifically for winter watering, and we do need winter water out here, um, only it takes four inches of snow to equate to one inch of water. Really? So it's, yeah, the proportion is very off. So we could wow. have a lot of snow, but really it doesn't equate to a lot of water for our poor plants. I wouldn't have thought that. 
Yeah, so we try and say, wa try and water twice a month, now knowing if we have some snow on the ground, we have some melting, once a month is fine. Okay. Now, I do a bucket trick. <laughs> so I take a five gallon bucket, I drill little holes in the bottom, put it next to my tree, fill it with water, we walk away. Oh. Come back out a little bit later, move the five gallon bucket to my shrub, fill it up, water, walk away. And that's, so I just do that smart. until my, all my shrubs and my trees are taken care of. Okay. Perennials don't need that much water. A good couple of minutes of sprinkling and letting that water really soak in is about all they need. Mm -hmm. A five gallon bucket trick, especially for busy moms, busy families. Very cool. Thank you so yeah. much for coming down here and educating us, especially me. I, I know nothing of this. I don't touch the yard. <laughs> I rarely go outside. So, yeah, no problem. Anything. So, we'll definitely have Chelsea's information in the description below so you can reach out to her to plan your landscaping needs. And if you would like to be featured, go ahead and make a comment in the description below as well. Remember who to call for all of your fabulous real estate and landscaping needs. Make it a fabulous. Oh, 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 oh,